Welcome to the Meditation Podcast. You can find all our episodes on the meditationpodcast.org. We're also on BitChute and YouTube. you find the links in the podcast description. I'm also a podcasting coach because I've got four other podcasts, with four of them getting to the top half percent. So if you're interested in that and all my other social media, bio.link forward slash podcaster. Today, my guest, he's French, living in Austria, but he's not in Austria at the moment. Angel Chetto. Bonjour. Bonjour. <laughs> Thank you for having me. That's awesome. Um, so you might let people know. Who are you? Yeah, so as you, as you said, my name is Angèle Preto. I'm French. I live in Austria. I'm uh, currently traveling in the U.S. Uh, I mostly work with native English speakers because I'm a French learning coach, and I specialize in uh, helping English speakers also become French speakers. So going from a situation where you're monolingual to where you're bilingual, you're fully able to perform in two languages, which is uh, often a big step to take for English speakers because they have grown up in a system that just does not value other languages, but sometimes their personal life, their career, sometimes their marriage uh, leads them to um, needing that language. So that's what I help them with. Uh, I do this I do this online, so you can work with me no matter where you are in the world. And um, yeah, I think I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm the first person to ever have created meditations that help you learn French. No, so I'm, that is why I am here yeah, today. No, I'm, I'm, I, yeah, I'm very interested. And I've listened to, because you, you've actually sent me on some of the meditations, which, mm -hmm. and those for the listeners, they'll actually be after the interview goes out. So you'll actually get to listen to some of the interviews. But I mean, there's a few few things that, have, you know, I, I'd like to touch your different meditations, obviously, and how you got into that. But like, you speak five languages, Obviously mm -hmm. French, I'm assuming, because you're living in Austria, German, obviously English. Yes. So I'd like yes. to know what the other two are. Um, yeah, I would not to brag, but uh, the other three. <laughs> Portuguese, oh. Spanish, <laughs> Spanish, Esperanto and Portuguese in this order of, wow. uh, of fluency. Yeah. And basically, did you apply your own system to help you become fluent in the other languages? Um, kind of, but kind of not, uh, because I first did it and then I formalized the system okay okay so yeah, it was in this order so i suppose before we touch into that you might let me know your kind of your meditation journey yes absolutely um, meditation is something i discovered well you know i'm like everyone i had heard of meditation and, and the benefits for years and years and i was oh i wish i could do that but you know never managed uh, but i got serious about it when i started my business because a lot of people, you know, in the personal development uh, space and in the entrepreneurship space will insist that meditation just really makes things so much easier. And it's true. And it was hit or miss for a long time. I mean, I started my business in 2016. It was hit or miss until 2019. That's when I discovered the uh, Silva method. And uh, that was absolutely a game changer. I, I went to Munich to uh, take the Mind Valley Intuition training in person, which was uh, another name they had given to the Silva Ultra Mind system because at the time they had some branding issues, so they couldn't call it what it was. But it really was uh, the Silva Ultra Mind system. And then from that moment on, it was much easier to have a consistent practice because it's really is a um, it's a method that just like allows you to learn to meditate really fast in two days in that case. And at first I really didn't believe them. Like I read their sales page and I was like, you will be able to get into a meditative state in less than one minute. I was like, that can't be true. Like, come on. No, it is true. Like I can get into a meditative state in 15 seconds now. So yeah. And it's but, I mean, interesting that's, that's actually because I... the top of the iceberg, like the amount of stuff you can do with that is insane. No, definitely. Like I've been uh, going to Mind Valley events mm -hmm. for six, seven years, and oh, wow. so I know that they bought actually the Silva Method, so now they're actually teaching that. But I know that my father had read the book years ago from mm -hmm. Jose Silva, and he was able yes. to actually, if somebody held up a coin, he would be able to tell the year of the coin and everything. He was, mm -hmm. and it started scaring him. So he stayed away from it. And I was like, I know it was annoying. I said, why didn't you keep pushing that? Like, he don't was getting... be scared. Like yeah. why? It's, <laughs> it's, don't you want to be able to do it yourself? You exactly. Know? Yeah. But no, definitely. This, he, I mean, yeah, he was ahead of the game with the, with the silver method and it was yeah. brilliant. So for me personally, because I'm very interested in this conversation today, because I actually did French for three years in school. One didn't appreciate it because didn't realize how valuable uh, 
languages are you know later mm. on it's like oh why didn't i actually learn that but two the way it was actually taught to us was very bad and i think a lot of the time like even in poland though like there's so many people they could probably write better than me and they'll say oh the 16 tenses simple present simple past and i'm looking and i'm going you don't need that but they can't have a conversation and mm-hmm. like i just like i'd love to know your way of actually teaching because for like i'm living in poland and i was trying so many different things i list uh, rosetta stone pimsner constantly having cds getting lessons at one stage I was falling asleep getting the lessons because I was doing it after um, working. And the, the lady used to get me to juggle tennis balls just to get my mind active that I wouldn't get it. Because I actually fell asleep a few times because I find it very tiring. Right. And I think it's a lot of, is the kind of mindset because no, I kind of, I don't force myself. I'm just kind of enjoying it as I'm, mm-hmm. I'm doing the Polish podcast. And I, I think my level has jumped so much based on, I don't know the the old system where it's kind of pushed on you to as opposed mm-hmm. to you really embrace it. Yeah, like there is definitely a component of you embracing it versus it being pushed on you. Pushed on you will never work. So that's you know clear. I I am totally uh, guilty of having been part of the system because I've had my online business for almost seven years, but I have over eighteen years of being a teacher, which means that I had some time before that where I was participating in a system that wasn't mine. And that I, I hadn't, uh, you know, honed to be um, like, as efficient as possible. So there's there's that. Like, there's definitely it's important to feel safe and enjoy yourself while you're learning. I insist a lot in practicing on a safe in a safe space. And then there's also how the curriculum is designed. So the way that I do it when I meet with a new potential client, I ask them or a, a new client who has signed up with me. I ask them, okay, like in details what do you see yourself being able to do like what is the reason why you're learning french um what is your career goals why do you need it and then based on that i designed the program exactly to match uh, all of the things that they want to be doing and i cut off all the rest and that is that's the most powerful thing that i do because the french language has over hundred thousand words but probably you need somewhere between 1,000 to 5,000 to be able to do the things that you want to be doing, depending on uh, how elaborate your profession is. But the thing is, it's not the same words for everybody. It's also not the same way of teaching, the same grammar and so on. Like there is a common, you know, there is a common base, but there are a lot of things that you will need that another person will not need. And if you cut off everything you don't need, it's so much faster and you save so much headache and you will make progress really fast. So that's really um, the one thing that I do, which is different, like one curriculum per student. I think that's very important. And like when I was getting a lot of different going to classes, learning the Polish, they just kind of kept pushing a certain book or grammar. And I mm-hmm. I felt like my thing, as you said there and all, was like my most important thing was to have a conversation, right. to be able to talk to people. Did I need to be able to, yeah, it would be an advantage to be able to read and write, but the mm-hmm. first thing is to be able to talk because then afterwards that will come if you need it later. But most right. of the time, and what I'm finding, the whole education system, it's all the grammar that they're pushing, which is the thing that makes people tire. And it comes down yeah. to, a lot of it comes down to the memory. So if you have a good memory, you tend to be good at the languages, whereas if you don't, you tend to struggle the way that they actually teach it in a lot of the schools. This is, this is definitely true. There's a lot of pushing the grammar, and I'm not going to lie, grammar is definitely important for French, especially if you're someone serious like a doctor or a lawyer, which, you know, I have lots of people with that kind of a high-level profession that I work with. And, yeah, it's important to be able to express yourself in a way that um, will be accepted by your peers in the language. But it's um, more important to be able to connect your thoughts with what you want to say, like to just actually be able to spit it out. Like in my experience, there are a lot of, like everybody basically has a lot more French in their head than they're able to speak out. And a lot of, uh, in fact, one of the main reasons why I added a meditation component to my coaching practice is that I find that if you have meditated, you will be much more able to access the, the knowledge that you do have and to put together the words. So it's not all about, you know, cramming your brain with things, which unfortunately is it's what school wants you to do, right? If you're at school and you have a language class, you're going to cram something in your brain and then you're going to have a paper and a test where you have to like put it out and like fill in the blank or something or best case scenario, you have to write an essay. And, and that's, you know, 
the schools have to do what they've got to do. Like they, they have to they have to grade and they have to find a way to do it. But that's just not how you teach a language. How to teach a language is like connect what you need to be doing with the situation in real life. And I've kind of noticed that uh, both in Spanish, I did, like I when I was in my early 20s, I dated a Spanish girl. So I started learning Spanish and then I kind of didn't do no more for years, but I was doing the Duolingo and Duolingo uh, allows then to kind of, there was like sentences and I could understand everything. But if you ask right. me to repeat that and I find the same because I did a po- podcast with like, say, a Polish teacher and she's talking away and I'm saying the English. But if you tell told me to say exactly what she said, I would really be struggling. But yet I know it. So mm-hmm. I know the words are in there, but it's actually trying right. to. So what's the best way to kind of because it is in there. Is it meditation that's actually going to get you to that level? Because it's for I, I know it might sound strange, but a lot of the time, not just with me, it's when somebody's drinking, it's like they're relaxed yeah. and they're going, <laughs> I never knew you could speak like that. You yeah. Know? So it, um... it is in there. It's like it's 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 hidden in a little box at the back of your head and it doesn't want to come out till you kind of relax. You have to be in this state of being relaxed and focused at the same time. And meditation can really help with that. Um a, a, a skill that you can compare is the skill of driving. Like when you learn to drive, I'm sure you were like relatively stressed out with all the stuff you had to learn. But now that you're an adult and you, I assume, can drive, uh, you drive and you're like focusing on the road, but also you're not stressed out. And it's the same kind of state you want to achieve with, um, with speaking a foreign language. So meditation can help you get there. I find that even more important than meditation, it's important to be in a space where you know that people will uh, accept you at least for the practice. And it's also something that's very different from the real life practice. Like one of the reasons why my coaching is helpful, like my group classes and the one-on-one classes as well, is that I create this space where no matter what you say, you're not going to be judged or mocked and you won't have real life consequences. And that's really important because if you know you have this container where you can practice, you will be able to say more and then hopefully after you have learned to say it quote unquote properly you'll be able to say it in real life and not get unintended consequences which you know sometimes it can be pretty devastating uh, if it's in an exam if it's in a job interview if it's with a client like if you're a lawyer or or a doctor or something like the number of things that can go wrong you know Um, but I create a space where nothing can go wrong so that really helps with relaxing now it doesn't mean that people get always super relaxed because it's easier said than done even if it's like you have the perfect space a lot of people are just not used to doing that Um, but again meditation helps and getting used to it helps so it's it's a lot of getting yourself in the mindset and i suppose this is kind of relating to teachers but also kind of in general kind of day-to-day conversations because there's there's different people that you you talk with like some people you have to say the words exactly before they understand and then they later they'll start shouting at you thinking that by shouting at you you'll understand it better or they want you to just keep repeating and it like if you don't know the word whereas for me when i'm talking to somebody and their english isn't great i know exactly what they're trying to say and the odd right. time i'll kind of correct something but i'm not like there's there's some people and teachers I've seen teachers do that to me and I told us as well they're just constantly correcting you which to me I'm not sure it's the same with others but it just sucks the energy out of me like it's okay because I I, my own thoughts is that you slowly like with my son like my son was born in Poland you know he's eight but I know I've taught him English and you know he's fluent in English and Mm -hmm. It, it it's like it's just every now and again I just kind of say no it's not this is that and he just corrects but have you noticed that yourself the way people do that yeah absolutely uh, a lot of teachers overcorrect, some also undercorrect, and it's it's a lot about the experience of striking a balance uh, that is one of the reasons why i have only seven one-on-one clients at, at any time like if i have all my sevens i'll be like okay sorry get on the wait list because i i want to really know them well i need to know exactly where they are at like what they have learned, what their personality is like, and just how much I can correct just to keep them motivated and not to discourage them. Because it's very easy to to get discouraged uh, with learning a language, especially if you realize the amount of stuff that you, quote unquote, have yet to learn. It's like, you know, I want people to always only see the next step, basically. Or if they get 
to see more than one step. For example, in my group classes, you know, I organize the students from beginner to advanced in one class. Like they will show up. I'm like, okay, like you today are the least advanced, so you speak first, and you're the most advanced, so you speak last, basically. And I give them feedback. I, I do this in this order so that everybody who's more advanced than the beginners get to review the basics. And then the beginners I love like, that straight away because, I mean, see. if I'm the least experienced there, I just want to, and I hear the most advanced person going first. Yeah, you don't I want to hear them before, right? straight away. No, but I mean, not that's everybody will do that. that. Brilliant. So, so you do get a glimpse of like, oh my God, like that person is so much more advanced than me. Sure, but you've already spoken. You've already gotten your feedback. Like this is your next step. And now you can relax and just like see. Maybe you get something from, from the feedback I get from other people or to from them speaking as well, you know, uh, but you're not in a situation of stress. So I, I basically set up everything I can to reduce the stress as much as possible. Um, I wish I could delete the stress entirely, but, you know, let's be realistic, especially adults when they are in a learning situation, they will have some amount of stress because, you know, performance anxiety and like the school system has trained us terribly for decades so you can't erase that but you can do the best you can in, in that situation so that's why i really try to be cautious with how i correct and correct just the right amount so that people make progress and i mean i know it kind of depends on uh, somebody's financial circumstances as well not just with which are own clients but i mean in yeah. any uh, language that they're learning but do you find that because you're kind of in a group that it's a better way of kind of motivating each other and you kind of you're like it's not just one-on-one -on -one that you kind of because sometimes you can go jesus am i stupid because i can't grasp this <laughs> whereas if i hear four or five people kind of doing it i'm just curious what's the you know when when, when you're dealing with different people one-on-one -on -one or groups it it can help it definitely depends on the personality of the student no, I can tell you straight on, if my student in a one-on-one -on -one is like, I can't get this, I'm stupid, I'm doing something wrong. Because it's my job as a coach to be empowering the student and to point them, to show them what they have achieved and so on. Now, I do have a lot of people, I would say a majority, if not everyone, who do focus a lot on like the small mistakes. They have been trained to try and achieve 100%. Like, uh, for example, I, I sometimes prepare people for um, French exams, you know, and uh, standardized exams that are, that are the same across the world. And to pass those exams, you only need 50%. But sometimes the students just really, really want to get as close to 100% as possible. And as long as they're not at 98%, they are not happy. And I'm like, I, I get that. I understand. I'm a big perfectionist myself as well. But also, like, please take it as a game. Like, the remaining 50% above the 50 that you need make that a game for you like it's it's okay like there will be no consequence like whether you get 55 or 95 it won't make a difference in your life you'll just pass so it, it's my job to you know remind the person like what the goal is and how much of it is achieved because sometimes 150 percent of the goal is achieved and they're still like ah, I'm, i suck i'm terrible i won't get this and it's just and I it's, suppose that's coming down to the mindset again, beating yourself up, which in yes. turn is probably holding you back. Because if you're if you're not in a positive mindset, you're not really progressing. As and I mean, like some people can you know learn a lot. Like my brother was fluent. He moved to Holland in uh, two years. He was fluent. I mean, I don't have that gift. Like I'm just, <laughs> I'm 15 years here. I'm still not fluent in Polish. But uh -huh. you know, but it's also a lot of the difference between a teacher and a coach again. Like the teachers, I love teachers, I've got nothing against them, but very often they are working for a system, not working for the students. And as much as they want to be working for the students, like an honest teacher will acknowledge, yes, I have to deal with that system and I have to serve that system like somehow first. And then if I have some free time, I'll, I'll help the students, you know, but the, the system isn't designed in a way to help the students succeed. It's more designed in a way to like select the students or like gatekeep some people or just you know find whoever will be the best for a profession later this kind of roles which like for me you're hiring me you're paying me you're my boss essentially if you're my client like i i like to think that we have a, an equal relationship but still i'm here to serve you and your goals and my job is to you know show you that okay like this is the way to the goal and like this much of the goal is achieved and if you only do this and this and that you get like this many more percent 
and to shortcut the way to you. Like I once heard the, the best definition of the coach ever. It's a, someone who said that the coach, a coach is a vehicle. It's something that will help you to get, get to the place where you want to be faster. And that's absolutely it. Okay, excellent, excellent. So, I mean, I'm conscious that all the listeners, they don't want to learn French or it's not really, but some will. But if we look at it, because a lot of people are learning a language. So if we look at it that somebody, whether it's Spanish, whatever it is, and they're starting off, they just want to get to a certain basic level. Like what's the, the best way to actually start beginning a learning a language? So step one, you want to redefine why you want to do it and exactly what it looks like and how it, like how do you know you have achieved it? Because if your step one is to open Duolingo and just do Duolingo, like I have a love-hate relationship with Duolingo because it's so cute and everybody loves it, but also it does not teach any language to anyone. <laughs> and often the first conversation I have with people is like, I've been doing Duolingo for, you know, you name it, six months, one year, two years, 10 years, and then uh, I don't speak. And like, yeah, it's just not designed for that. So first step is like, actually design, okay, this is my goal. Say you want to learn Spanish because you are going to have a vacation and you plan on going to the beach and uh, visiting a couple of museums and I don't know, like going to the restaurant, okay? So you know you've achieved it when you can make your way to the beach with maybe public transportation or maybe rent a car or whatever it is for you. You can go to the restaurant and order the menu without um, having to speak English to the waiter or even better, go to a place where they don't speak English. And um, you can uh, get a ticket at the museum and, you know, find an audio guide maybe in, in your native language. Okay, this is, these, are, these are the bars uh, for your achievement. Then you want to study like exactly these things. You can find a teacher or a tutor. If you find someone to do it one on one, it's definitely better uh, because then you can be like, okay, these are my goals. I want to do this and teach me how to do this. Um, of course, that's a very uh, simple example. You do have people who, uh, I don't know, like have people who end up leading charities, for example, in French speaking countries. No, that becomes a lot more complex and that will require, uh, that, that's when you want to hire a coach. Like honestly, if you, you're in the situation of leading a charity or uh, if you want to join Médecins Sans Frontières, for example, which is a really big uh, French speaking organization. Uh, I work with people who uh, want to do charity work with Médecins Sans Frontières just because one of the way that they select their charity workers is with the level of French. So, um, you know, that's the kind of thing that I do. And then, then you want to have like exactly like what you need to where first pass their test and then what you will need to be able to perform on the, in the situation. So that's your first step, like design, like define exactly what you want to do, then find someone who can help you do it. If you want to do it on your own, it's theoretically possible, but, um, I would not recommend if you're an if you're just an English speaker and you don't speak another language already. I would not recommend trying to do it on your own just because you simply don't have experience learning languages. Um, if you have already like three or four languages, maybe you have enough experience learning languages to be able to do it on your own. Like it's perfectly possible to become fluent in a language on your own. Well, not on your own, but like you find people to speak to um, and for free. But if you've never done it it's going to be extremely difficult and maybe you want to uh, just pay someone a little bit to shortcut your way. And I heard somebody uh, mentioning that when you're learning a few languages, your brain is kind of getting into the language mode. Is that, is that yeah. Uh, yeah? Yes, definitely. I mean, for me, if I needed to learn a seventh language, it wouldn't be as hard as it is for someone who's learning their second language just because you have more brain plasticity in the language area and you have already like winning strategies to learn it um a few people like I don't know, teachers and stuff they used to be trying to get me to listen to the radio and watch the television one most of the time the the radio is like news which is all negativity so i don't like to mm -hmm. listen to that anyway so and same with the television i don't like watching ads and things like that are in Poland it was mainly a lector so it's basically monotone a guy talking for the whole film and I didn't find that a benefit I just curious what's your thoughts on kind of listening to radio for a language or listen I mean not all countries have a lector they do it properly but watching yeah. a movie says oh great great question and uh, it's also something I insist a lot in my practice I call it the daily French bath um, basically, there is no way that your brain will 
learn a language if the language is not around you. That's how you learn your native language. The only reason why you learned it is because it was around you all the time. And you're like, okay, like this is a part of human life. If I'm going to be a human, <laughs> I'm going to have to speak a language. So you have to put the other language, French, for example, uh, as part of your life as well. And an easy way to do that is to watch or listen to some content. And I love YouTube for that because there is a YouTube channel typically more than one for everything in French. Like it has been like, because I also, in my first consultation with people, like ask about all of their hobbies and interests, what they are, so that then I can find YouTube channels or podcasts uh, to have them have their daily French bath. And it's great to have something that you already have an affinity about, like a, an interest for, and to just have that in your French content. Because as you said, like the, it's, if it's only the news, it's all negative. You don't want to see that. Or maybe the TV is a lecture, like it's very poor. But I'm sure like in Poland, you have, I mean, I'm not, I haven't checked, but probably you have a Polish YouTuber or, or 10 uh, on, that have made meditation tracks in Polish and you could totally use that. Even if you don't understand everything at the beginning or even if you don't understand anything, um, that, that's why I insist so much on the daily French bath. Like when you were a baby, you were not understanding what was going on but you didn't care and it was not a problem, right? So you should still be uh, able to do that, like even have it in the background when you're cooking or driving or whatever it is that you're doing. And just so you have some French around because that's how your brain will be like, okay, I guess I have two languages now. I better get good at this one too. With the, um, the Polish uh, podcast that uh, I've done, when I was trying to, because uh, I said, oh, okay, I, I, I started listening to Spanish podcasts and I was enjoying this and maybe I can improve my Polish by listening to Polish one. But there was two types that I came across. One was scripted, which I didn't enjoy because, you know, it's not natural. They're just, oh, how are you today? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm fine. And, you know, and obviously Polish. Yeah, but that's the, a big the other one then was too. only yeah. Polish, which you're kind of saying. But for me my level wasn't good enough and I was just getting tired listening to it. So that's why what I did is I created the one where I'm actually saying not all of it and slowly less English, but building as I go along. And I don't know, is that a bad thing or a good thing? But I mean, we've like, it's, uh, it's been number one in a lot of countries. So people are actually liking it mm -hmm. and there's, you know, over half a million downloads, but I'm just wondering, right. is it better or less just, eliminating this but keeping it more simple that they understand in other words we're kind of explaining something in an easier format once you say it first that you know the first word might be complex and then you kind of change it and explain it but it's still in polish but sometimes i'm actually obviously i'm given the word in english because i know there's a lot of foreigners right. listening to the podcast yeah no it's absolutely great you have created your own technique that works for you obviously otherwise you wouldn't have kept doing it right and um Obviously, you have a lot of listeners who love it as well. So clearly, it works. Like, I'm always, I'm, I'm not going proceeding from a dogma or like, oh, this is good or this is bad, which unfortunately in the language learning, uh, quote unquote, research, we have a lot of that. Um, it works, therefore, it is good. Like, you have to use what you like and use what works. Like, life is too short to stick to something that you don't enjoy or that is not working. So, yeah, like, absolutely. Like, I think. Everything that you mentioned can be useful at some point. So like things that are made for learners, I have a bit of a bone to pick with them because uh, it's often just unrealistic. And sometimes you will get learners that can only do that. Now, it's good that they can do that, but it's also good that they could have like another step. So that's why I recommend listening to real life content, like things that's made by natives for natives because that's the way you will get familiar with how they really speak um, and, you know, deal with the real language in real life. Now, it's okay to use both. And it's great that you created sort of a, a podcast that's a, a bridge between those situations. Like, I think it's amazing. That's a great job. Yeah. Um, like what I did as well, because I was conscious of getting tired when I'm learning is I kept the episode short and not doing half an hour. Mm -hmm. It's like five to 10 minutes each episode. And obviously a person then is no problem going, ah, I can, you know, if I'm on a bus or just whatever, they can do right. it. And yeah. And like when, when, when you're kind of doing uh, lessons or whatever, like do, do you keep it at max an hour or 
like do you find because i i know everyone's individual and some people can go mm-hmm. away because i even know from um you know the school that, that you know some people might do four hours or whatever or even a full, full time for six months or something like that like what's the kind of basically for people to learn that is it each person is so unique that they go yeah this isn't is it down to tiredness really that you're staying um, focused I mean, I personally, in, in one-on-one, never go over one hour anymore. I've done it in the past. I find that, especially with coaching, like in one hour, I should be able to definitely input enough so the person makes the next chunk um, of, of, the, of the way because I give homework and, you know, they have their daily French bath and so on. Um, so definitely never more than one hour. With like full beginners, it, one hour can already be too much. So what I tend to do is I build a break in the middle of the hour where maybe we speak a little bit in English about something else. And then, um, you know, after like 10 minutes, like their brain has refreshed, we do another chunk uh, of French. Like it's really, there's, there's a feeling to it, to be honest. I do find that students get quickly able to do the whole hour. Uh, but after the whole hour, most of the time, they're really wiped because they focus a lot. Like it's a lot more tiring for them to do this one hour than it is for me. And then with group classes, um, because every student speaks for only a portion of the time, um, sometimes they go over one hour. It depends just how many people are here and uh, how long it takes to help them all speak. I totally have the plan to have more because right now I only have one hour per week. Uh, It's on Sundays. But when I have more students, like I have definitely so many students that it never fits in one hour, I'll just open a second one. Um, But like right now it happens sometimes that it goes to one hour and a half just because it's a bit random and as long as I'm available and the students are available I don't mind continuing but it's supposed to be one hour okay and I'm just curious with with, uh, you know your clients what I find is even with people say that we're working from here or conversations obviously English is a lot easier for me you know I find Mm -hmm. it's easier to get my humor out with English and I try, I go even go into restaurants and stuff like that. I tried speaking in po- And as soon as someone kind of knows that I'm a foreigner, they'll switch it back to English. And it just suits me. And I, I'm not doing myself any favors. Do you ever kind of discuss things like that with people to stop kind of doing that where you're just taking it easy, going back to your, you know, your, your own language? Yes, it's it's a recurring uh, question. For some people, it's a recurring problem. You have really you have two ways of approaching this. Either you really really want to practice the language, so you can tell people, okay, like, please don't speak English to me. You know, you can say that in French, like, I want to practice French, and please don't speak English to me. You can you can try that. Often people will you know play along with it. Um, I know someone who uh, goes as far as to pretend she doesn't speak English at all. <laughs> so can I like cut them short? Um, but I also believe that priority is to the communication. Most of the time, like you might just not have the time or the space to practice and, and that's okay. It really depends on a case by case scenario. Like for example, I live in Austria and I've been in German speaking countries for 10 years, but the last actually more than that, <laughs> 12 years. Uh, but they, basically the first five years, my German became really good. And then I moved to Berlin and I thought, oh, I'm going to learn the real German, you know, uh, but the opposite happened. I only ever spoke English basically until from that point onwards. Then, then I moved back to Vienna and I do speak some German when I have to, but sometimes the, the situation is too complex. And I'm like, okay, like if I can find someone who speaks English to do it, it will be so much easier. So it depends on what's possible and how you can make things smooth. Sometimes you don't have to force yourself to speak and sometimes your level is just not good enough. And you can, if you can somehow afford not to do it, it, it it's okay. Yeah, yeah, no, but I you mean, have to be aware that to, it's not... It's better to your... comprehend in your own language than try it in the... In, in, right, in, yeah. because sometimes you actually have something to achieve. Like most of the time, actually. So if you can do it in a foreign language, that, that's great. Um, but you hopefully shouldn't have to. It really depends on the situation. You also have situations where you just don't have English speakers and you have to like, get it done somehow. 
most notoriously the administrations. I don't know how it is in Poland, but in German speaking country, people who work in the administration or for the government, for some reason, they never speak English. I don't know if it's a requirement exact for that same. job. It's the exact <laughs> so same in Poland. If you Poland. speak English, we're not going to hire you. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I, not only that, but uh, I think they have to have uh, an angry uh, attitude as well. That kind oh, of goes too, along yeah. with the position. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, they Especially don't like if you're that. a foreigner. How dare you be in their country? Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so listen, thoroughly enjoyed our conversation. So you might first let people know the meditations that you're, what, what they're going to be about, because I'll include them in uh, the, the following shows that they, and, you know, with the links on it. And then uh, also give your... Uh, uh, websites and stuff like that where they can find you yes yeah, so the meditations that i shared with you there are two different ones uh they're in the styles of my favorite mind valley authors uh, namely bird coleman and christy mary sheldon so the uh the one that's in the style of uh, bird coleman is meeting your french self so it's a quantum jumping meditation the whole idea with quantum jumping is that you jump to a parallel universe and in that universe there is a twin self like a version of you that only differs by one trait or two traits. And so that version differs by the fact that they speak French already. So you can meet with them and then you can merge with them and learn some lessons and get the vibration of that uh, version of you and then bring it back to uh, this reality. So that can be very useful before a class or before you have to speak French, before you want to have a French reading session. Um, you can also use it for another language. I've had people who just, you know, take the track and switch French towards Spanish or German or wherever, uh, and, and it works just the same. And the second one is an energy clearing meditation. It's in the style of Chrissy Mary Sheldon, and it's meant to release the energy blocks that you have to speak in French um, or, you know, replace with the name of another language. I created this one because I realized that there are some students who somehow, like, cannot be taught which is weird because they do all of the efforts that it should theoretically take. They do everything, but then it doesn't happen. And I was like, this can only be an energy block. Let me see what I can do. And actually in my, uh, in my group program, the French Fancy Accelerator, we have a, a workshop library, which I made little by little. And um, the students love, love the idea of an energy clearing workshop so much that it's what I did next. And so I have a workshop that's like an hour and a half where we address systematically like what kind of block there could be with including ancestral clearing, things like that, because the French have made problems all over the world for everyone at some point of the history or other. So you have had some ancestors at some point who have had problems with the French. So that's the kind of thing that um, we can address because it can still be you know, stuck somewhere in your energy field. And it, it's, uh, it gives really surprising results. So I recommend you give it a try. Um, and yeah, so those are the two tracks uh, on my YouTube channel. I have a couple more. And then I have a French Fluency Starter Kit, which you can get on my website. So it's frenchfluency.net slash starter kit. And in that starter kit, there is also another uh, meditation track, which you can download. And it's called Open Your Mind to French. That one has the introduction all in English. And then I, like when you're, you know, the body relaxation and the beginning of a meditation track, pretty traditional. And then when you're well relaxed, I switch to French so that you can um, get more of the language as you are already relaxed. So those are the ones that exist right now. I will definitely will be making more. So if you have any suggestions of like a particular track you'd like to have, please let me know. Um, and yeah, my website is frenchfrances.net. So that's where it's easy to find me. You can navigate to the coaching tags, to, to the coaching tab to find out like the kind of things that I do. And at any point, you can always book a free 30 minutes conversation with me. So we talk about your know, French learning project and yeah, see if we can work together. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, no, so, totally yeah. enjoy the conversation. And I'll make sure that I put all the links because I know you've got a TikTok, your, your TikTok, uh, YouTube and Facebook. And so I'll I put all the links in the thing. Do everything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Maybe not That's very well, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I think people that that will find you through that. I think TikTok is actually a good way of doing Like, I like people learning a language through TikTok as opposed to just watching somebody doing a, you know, a silly dance or something. You know, there's right. some beneficial things for it. So, yes. no, so I'll make sure I put the link. So, and yeah. thank you very much for the meditations. I've listened to them, so I know that the listeners will enjoy them. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Roy, for having me. I enjoyed it and yeah, look thank forward you. to hearing it.
no problem. So that's all for the Meditation Podcast. You'll find all our episodes on the meditationpodcast.org, as mentioned from BitChute and YouTube, and everything about me and my podcast coaching bio.link forward slash podcaster. Sure to give us a thumbs up, five-star rating, really helps. Until next week, take care.